Hey guys, Yarek here and welcome to Emberscape and once again I did prepare 10 more pieces of ember and we will make photos today so let's see what kind of variety do I have for today quite a few pieces like two plants not sure what kind we will see only after microscope we have a nice wasp I know exactly what it is it's very impressive and rare next we have snail but the piece is dark so I don't expect too much from it some sort of larva but this piece uh, might have some problems and I will explain later oopsie this one I have no idea, we'll see together, and yeah, some sort of Neuroptera, uh, wasp, a sweet beetle, kind of, kind of, yeah, and roachoid, some sort, so yeah, let's start from, 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 from the snail, uh, I don't expect too much from it because the piece is dark, let's try to make photos together. First let's uh, do my setup and I will show you how it looks with low light, not great. Much better, straight away. Next. I was wiggling with the lights for a while, but as expected with my current equipment I have troubles getting decent pictures of inclusions that are in the darker pieces of amber. This particular snail does not look great, it's heavily oxidized, I'm guessing that the crack was the reason of oxidation. Piece itself is pleasant, but there is small detail that is interesting, I think that these black dots in the snail could be coprolites. So the snail unfortunately was quite degraded and oxidized, but the next piece which I will take is not dark at all and it's very clear and looks in very nice condition, so I expect good pictures from this one. As expected from the clearer piece, it's a lot better than the snail. The photos turned out a lot better, piece itself is quite small, a bit bigger than a rice. The beetle is around 4 mm, which is average for amber inclusion. Bigger, stronger insects have a lot better chances escaping the sticky raisin. I'm quite happy with these pictures, it is indeed a beetle, the Coleoptera, but I don't know the exact family of this one, if someone has any ideas, let me know in the comments. The preservation though very well preserved insect for its age, considering it's around 100 million years old. The beetle was brilliant, but now I will take one more darker piece, but it's not as bad as the snail, so... It's beautiful plant, it's damaged, as you can see in the middle, I wonder how it got damaged, but the shape of this piece is quite nice, and the colors as well. I wonder what kind of plant it is, we will know when, I will take some pictures, so let's go ahead and take them. And the plant is... It's a fern, one of the more common plants that can be found in amber from Burma. Considering that the plants are a lot more uncommon than the insects, it's unfortunately damaged, but preservation is decent. We can see the plant structures and cells through the microscope, which is neat. The colors of the piece itself personally are amazing, like a sandstorm happening inside. As expected, even damaged plant did look awesome. So, the next piece I want to try this one. And this one is... Well, it's quite interesting to be honest, because I'm... I know it is a Neuroptera, but let's see what kind of Neuroptera. It might be a predatory one. It is indeed a Neuroptera, and I was right, it's a predatory one. It is called Mantispidaea, and as their name suggests, they possess raptorial forelimbs, similar to those of praying mantises, a case of convergent evolution. They were using those forelimbs to capture the prey and hold them tight while eating them alive. 
This mostly lived in tropical and subtropical environment, so it makes sense to find them in the Burmese ember, as that's the exact environment this ember comes from, except from the environment that was during the age of the dinosaurs. Quite a rare find in ember. Yep, exactly what I was thinking. This is perfect. And it's quite rare too. But let's just take another piece. Now I will take a problematic one. I think this one is gonna be a problematic one because of the shape. One more fail for today. I didn't manage to make sharp photos for this one, but from what I see, it's quite well preserved and it's over half centimeter in body length. Most likely, it's a Coleoptera larva, but these photos are not good enough to say from which species. I just knew it. I just knew it is gonna be like that because, first of all, you see all these dots and fuzziness inside. Uh, this fuzziness distorts the image, but you know what else distorts this image? The cabochon shape. You see it's rounded, uh, it has rounded dome on top. And that rounded dome also distorts the image and that's why we can't see it. So basically what uh, will I have to do in the future is make this top even, but yeah, it looks very close to the surface, the insect, so what can I do? I will cut it from, from this side, from the other side. We'll cut it and make it flat and we'll make it also close to the surface and that way I think the distortion will be a lot a lot better so we can inspect this bit a lot better because these pictures right now they are no good for anything. Unfortunate but let's take another piece. So another one is this. This tiny one. And this tiny one oh, 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 I think it will be a Alenoptera or Umenocolidae roach, the ones I did an uh, informative video about, it's the rare boogers, but it's really small, so let's see how does it look. I'm not an expert of Alenopteras, but it's definitely a roachoid, and it has the correct features, the big compound eyes and body shape of Alenopteridae nymphs. It's very small nymph, so I can't identify what kind of nymph it is. It could be Copulotoraptor's elegance nymph, but I don't see the thoracic scissors mechanism that they have. This one might be too young to have the scissors, but since it's such a young juvenile, it could also be Umonocolidea roach. I encourage you to go check out my alien cockroaches from the past informative video if you want to learn more about them. And so, was it small? Yes, it was very small, but I'm happy to own one. These are rare and it's quite hard to find them. Very happy with this one. Tiny booger, but I'm happy with this one. Only four pieces left. Uh, this one, this one, uh, this one, and this one. So now we'll take a look at the wasp, but the best one I will leave for the last one, so we can end this photo session as a bang. Position of this one is very nice. It's a wasp. Also quite dark and fuzzy piece, so not very lucky about this aspect. Tiny 3mm wasp. Wasps belongs to a huge and diverse order called Hymenoptera, and in the Cretaceous period, wasps had a tons of diversity. This particular one posing very nice for the shot, but as with all the darker pieces, I'm failing to capture good pictures for them. I have heard that glycerin helps a bit to remove fuzziness and make inclusions a bit clearer. We'll have to try that someday. <laughs> Imagine this one as a ring for a female, for example, or for me. Can we see it as a ring? My finger? I can see it. And the plant? Wonder what kind of plant it is? I've seen plenty of these plants. This is Salinginella. For sure. Very pleasing shape of this piece. It has the dome, but very small dome, so it shouldn't be 
problem for the picture, but let's go ahead and just make the picture. <laughs> Sweet. This Salanginella plant looks very colorful, and the plant structures and the veins are well visible. Quite nice preservation. Super aesthetic too. Small dome on the piece didn't ruin the pictures as the plant was close to the surface. I don't expect much from it, but I think this could be a manipulator cockroach nymph, but it's very tiny, very tiny, so I don't expect much from it. Definitely a cockroach and not a cricket. It lacks the powerful jumping legs to be a cricket. It's super small, around 2 mm, but cockroaches usually have short legs, and the predatory cockroaches, the manipulators, do have the long legs, so because of that I think this one could be a predatory cockroach. Let's finish it up. And finally dudes, this one I kept for last because in my opinion is the best piece from all of this. This one is extremely rare. Wasp. Look at this long abdomen, it will look magnificent in the pictures, because I think it's preserved really nicely. Tiny booger, but it will be aesthetic as fuck. It's called a Pelecinid wasp. Pelecinidae is a family of parasitic wasps. They haven't get extinct and today it contains only one living genus, Pelecinus, with three species known from the Americas, so they are quite rare even now. The earliest fossil species are known from the Jurassic and the whole group was highly diverse during the Cretaceous. These wasps are parasitic on larval beetles, flies, green lacewings and sawflies. And yeah, that's all I have for you today. Some amazing ember pieces from the Cretaceous period. Personal favorites was the beetle, the Alumnopterid and obviously this last parasitic wasp with the long abdomen. I hope you did enjoy this video, if you did, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you next time, bye!